been with the Red Cross. I've been in the Red Cross, and my mother, uh, I was exposed to my mother who was uh, drawing blood from people for the last 63 years until her death. Uh, and uh, I continue to do that, and I continue to modernize our blood center. I think our blood center is one of the most modern, even more modern than the yeah. Department of Health. And uh, we are aware of their uh, kudos. Uh, and I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm patting my people who teach me how to make sure we have a top-notch blood center in the country. But let me just put it this way, Mr. President. All those are correct. Compulsory HIV testing uh, shall be allowed only in the following instances. But, of course, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really presume a situation uh, where, for an example, somebody hides the fact or becomes vengeful or for example a spurned lady uh, or a spurned man for example and uh, uh, so that I will be gender friendly or even a homosexual uh, who wants to has been hurt by his uh, partner and decides to hide something knowingly that he has HIV and continues to have sex without protection and inflicting that I mean that's one exception that I have not seen here, that we should punish, actually. I would like to see a, a mandatory testing. I don't know. I I'd like to ask uh, the gentle lady what she feels about uh, punishing those who hide it. And secondly, uh, you know, having mandatory testing, if we're going to support this bill, I would manifest right now that I would require mandatory testing for all uh, pro high-risk professions or occupations, Mr. President. Uh, in fact, you know, nagagalit siya mga ibang kwanjan, but you know, uh, of course, the data doesn't show that our OFWs bring it in. The data does show that, especially in Mindanao, where it's highest, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm sure you have the data. It's highest in Mindanao, where there is a male-to-male, -male, uh, the last time I saw it, about a few, uh, a couple of years ago, it was highest in Mindanao, where male-to-male, uh, you know, pagtatalik uh, eh nakakataas ang HIV doon. So, so far as I'm concerned, Mr. President, uh, kulang ito uh, and that we should have uh, mandatory testing for occupational, uh, the high-risk occasional people and we should punish uh, to protect uh, people uh, from people who will deliberately omit to tell his partner or for that matter deliberately uh, inflict punishment upon his partner or her partner uh, for, uh, 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 you know, uh, HIV or AIDS. Mr. President, uh, regarding geographic distribution, uh, the top five regions actually are topped by the NCR, accounting for 42% of all cases diagnosed from 1984 yes, to March so. 2017. And if you look at the data, NCR probably has the most number of nightclubs, massage parlors, and everything. That's why I deliberately said Mindanao, by knowing that NCR is one of the highest, always been one of the highest. Yes, Mr. President, followed by Calabarzon at 14%, Central Visayas at 9%, Central Luzon at 9% also, and then the Davao region at uh, 6%. Uh, as a, in, in principle, or as a rule, Mr. President, mandatory or compulsory testing is prohibited in this bill, except for those... Uh, ex exceptions that the good gentleman from Zambales and I talked about earlier, uh, and one of these does involve concealment, uh, as in his uh, follow-up question, uh, uh, concealment of a sexually transmi transmissible disease, whether curable or not, uh, at the time of the marriage. But as for mandatory testing in other uh, sectors, uh, these are covered in the bill by prohibition. Um, uh, the bill, and I believe that mandatory testing should not be pursued, for example, in key affected populations, because this would be a practice that would promote stigma and discrimination against the key affected populations. It will be more effective as an alternative if our policies promote voluntary and confidential testing, encouraging, <coughs> excuse me, 
encouraging individuals to get to know their status and to get tested. And this is consistent, Mr. President, with the idea of focusing on the positive roles of persons living with HIV and uh, promoting their dignity. It's also important to note that uh, the World Health Organization and UNAIDS have issued a position stating that uh, WHO and UNAIDS do not support mandatory or compulsory testing of individuals on public health grounds. Uh, additionally, Mr. President, um, uh, for uh, health workers, mandatory testing for health workers, uh, we could ask that, but studies have shown that the risk of this happening, uh, them transmitting the disease to their patients during surgery or other procedures, is low. Only four instances of this have ever been reported worldwide, not just in the Philippines. Are you and talking last about but the French one? Mr. President? Where in a laboratory, they transmitted disease uh, because they were, I think, they, they made a mistake in the uh, examination of the blood and they were able to transfuse uh, blood uh, coming from a, a French uh, hospital or something like that. Then perhaps or in Mr. Australia or in Canada where the Canadian Red Cross almost got bankrupt uh, because they were able to transmit blood by mistake that contained the HIV virus. Are you talking about that? Um, I'll get back to you, Mr. President, on the details of these four cases. It's possible uh, that these uh, cases cited by the good gentleman from Sambales are among uh, these uh, four cases. Uh, or we could ask HIV screening for pregnant women mandatory. Uh, owing to the possibility of HIV transmission from mother to child, HIV screening should be one of the routine tests recommended or encouraged for pregnant women. Nevertheless, even in this case, Mr. President, the mother can opt out or choose not to take the test, and the, healthcare, the health provider cannot compel them or her to take the test. Mr. Mr. President, President, I support all the things that the lady said about screening for pregnant women, but I cannot support a system where we say stigmatization. I, you know, when I, when I, when I got those uh, bar girls, I did not even call them bar girls I, when, I, when I got them. I mean, I'm just using it so that it will be easier for everyone to understand. Because a girl working in a club in our place is a hostess. I didn't even call them a hostess. I called them euphemistically, you know, people who work in the entertainment industry. It could be an actor, it could be an actress, it could be a bar girl. And the stigmatization that I wanted, and I quarreled with the priest about this, is when that Irish priest put in aid skills in the community of Olongapo. And I said, my gosh, how are you now going to get somebody who has AIDS to come forward and have herself tested? And that's why I had those billboards removed. And then I went every week and had sessions with these people and I can tell you, the Los Angeles Times had a two-page, you know, cover, uh, coverage of what we were doing in Olongapo, and this was taken cogni and then the international newspapers took cognition of that. The Department of Health hailed what we were doing, because here's a government engaging people with HIV, in fact, encouraging them to tell their story to their peers, to their fellow workers, so that they would encourage the use of condoms, the use of protection, so that it will not spread. And it worked. But there was no stigmatization because we never revealed their identity. I'll tell you what the stigmatization is, Mr. President. One of the girls went home. And we allowed her to go. If she got home, you know, the Department of Health said this lady has AIDS. And when she went home, she was immediately brought to a hospital. And in that hospital, she was not put in the population. She was put in a storage room. And when she attended All Saints Day, or All Souls Day, which is really the, the time that we should go to the cemetery, not All Saints Day, uh, it's for our Memorial Day, her parents and their family stigmatized her and refused to accept her. That's stigmatization. Now, we protected these women and even this homosexual in Olongapo. And we went until, I can show you a picture of me with a dying age patient in San Lazaro. I was holding her hand. I can show you pictures of me talking with them. And I 
those are some of the private pictures that I, I keep. It, it, it uh, evokes a tear in my eye every time I see them because it was really a very, very difficult experience. An 18-year-old girl from Bataan says, why me? And the story is, I put a gun in my, I, I put my gun out there and I pretended to load it when in, really in reality, I was very good with guns at that time. I took out the round from the chamber and I said, here, kill yourself. You're bringing everybody down because you keep, you know, grieving to yourself and saying, oh, why did God do this to me? I'm a poor girl, etc., etc." And I was trying to put a teamwork among the ladies. And after that, she cried. I said, you know, you, you can prepare for your death. My father never had time to prepare for his death. He was just shocked. And I told him, you'll probably die in about a few years. I was never lying to them. At that time, there was no retroviral drugs. And I can tell you, after that, I went to give a speech following two weeks later in a graduation of a skills training center that I put up. And I said, this is a door opening to you. And I want to remind you that I'm in conversation with young women younger than you 